this initially it was developed by sun microsystems now it was uh, with uh, oracle so why java became most popular in this environment because of its uh, features only so my voice is audible right to everyone yes yes sir yes sir yeah so what are the major important features of java here so as you see um, the major most important uh, one is it is a object oriented so what is an object oriented uh, we'll discuss that later uh, this is one of the major feature uh, that makes java to be highlighted in this uh, era so second most important feature is platform independent why java is platform independent so there is a word to say about a platform independent as uh, write our code once and run it on any other system so what is uh, what does that mean so first um, in order to work with the computer we need to communicate with our computer so through by means of programs right so if we if we write our programs in either c or c++ or some other programming language we need to convert our piece of code into the piece of code which the computer can understand so for that we need a compiler so whether you take the c compiler whether you take the c++ compiler or java compiler or python compiler any compiler that definitely has to convert the user written high level programming code into machine understandable code so every compiler will converts it its own piece of code into uh, machine understandable code so here uh, if you take the c programming language uh, the programs written in c the c compiler will convert it into its a uh, system understandable format uh, as per the platform so if it is windows you need to run that on windows only if it is a, a kind of linux we need to have a linux compiler so like that we need to have a specific compiler with respect to the platform but when it comes to the java when it comes to the java we write the piece of code in one system and we'll compile it the executed uh, the taken compiler Uh, generated code by means of uh, java virtual machine we call it as jvm in short java virtual machine whichever the computer is having this uh, environment uh, there and all we can execute our piece of code into the uh, other systems also other systems in the sense uh, windows linux ubuntu or uh, mac operating system or any other operating system so that is the main advantage of uh, having this uh, as a platform independent and uh, coming on to the next feature which is uh, simple uh, why because uh, the most of the words or keywords whenever we talk about a particular language we specifically have some keywords with respect to, to that particular language so um, here um, all the code which we are going to write is a uh, human readable and easy to understand with the words that supported by java and uh, it is most secured one uh, it is uh, as it is converting our uh, piece of written code file into byte code it's very difficult to, to tamper or uh, get into some virus with that uh, converted file um, coming on to the next the architecture architecture neutral um, nowadays the laptops are coming with uh, multiple cores agreed or not so Uh, if you observe if you go and purchase any new laptop it is coming with a uh, four core uh, octa core hexa core uh, which means in one single uh, cpu chip uh, there are multiple processor cores so when we are executing our piece of code into the computer which means it is executing on the processor so uh, our java is not only supports executing on one particular processor according to the 
inbuilt uh, embedded processor it can execute on many processors many processors and which means uh, on the multiple cores also it can execute so it is portable as we discussed uh, right once uh, run anywhere uh, that we call it as a portable and robust it is very strong in nature uh, strong in nature means uh, when we get some errors or uh, when our code is being stopped, we need to handle that. In such a case, we can say that our uh, programming language is robust. So these are some um, important aspects to be discussed with uh, uh, basics of Java. So coming on to um, the basic syntax, how we are going to start our uh, simple program. Um, here we need to know about uh, four things. What is a class? What is an object? What is a method? What is an instance variable? Majorly we need to understand the difference between this class and object. So in general to speak a class, we can define it as a template or blueprint that describes the behavior or state that the object of its type supports. So what I can say about the class, it speaks about its uh, generality. So in the sense, uh, let me take as an example. Um, suppose there is a person. I can uh, categorize that person as a class. Then what I can call about as a uh, what a person, uh, what a person have a behavior or state. He can talk, he can walk, like all those kind of things. What a person can do, I can describe that person as a behavior or a state. Now, when it when I want to talk about uh, object, the object will comes under as a uh, example what you can give for a person. For example, Ashok. Ashok can speak. Ashok can talk like a. Uh, Hitesh also can do the same kind of a behavior what a class is providing. What a class behavior is providing. So in that way I can define a class or object, right? So sub, uh, in another way I can, uh, if you want me to take as an example, uh, the laptop I can take it as a class. What, uh, what is its behavior? It is having a keyboard as a functionality to perform. It is having a monitor to display some uh, output like that. So what uh, what I can give an example of an uh, object. Uh, HP is one of the laptop that providing all such features. Lenovo, MacBook, like kind of uh, things I can call it as a object. I hope uh, you got some clarity about class and object because many ways we can define a class and uh, object as right. So here a small example has been given. Suppose if a dog uh, is taken as a class, it is having some behaviors to uh, represent a dog. Its color, its name, its breed, uh, as well as its behavior as a uh, dragging, uh, their tail uh, barking, eating. So he, all these and all will comes under the behavior or state. So what is an object here? It is just an instance of a class, instance of a class that we will see in part of the example, right? So as for now, it's good or uh, having any doubts? If I am moving a little bit fast, please accept it because uh, we have uh, a lot of things to be covered with, right? So what is a method? So as I said, a class contains a behavior. That behavior can be represented by a method. A class can contains only the methods. Where we per, or, uh, write our own logics to perform that particular uh, method. For example, a calculator is there. I am taking it as a class. A calculator is a class. What is the uh, state or behavior of a calculator, it can perform some arithmetic operations. So arithmetic operations addition is one method. 
subtraction is one method, multiplication, division, all those kind of things, I can represent them as a methods. Then what about object here? What about the object here? The object I can take it as a uh, Casio, one of the calculator, like a company name of the calculator where that it is taking as a behavior. Right? So what is instance variable here? Every class is having some set of behavior. The set of behavior is uh, given to each and every object of that particular class. So here each and every object have its own type of uh, content to be described with. Right, uh, like um, here um, a dog. For example, um, there are three dogs and uh, we define under a class to take it as an object. Now, first dog color is different from second dog color. So how we are going to differentiate them? First dog name, second dog name, third dog name. We need to differentiate what is its breed and what is its behavior, what it is going to eat, how it is going to bark. So it is different for every object within the class. So for identifying such things, we have instance variables over here. That everything we are going to see now. So uh, can you see the first program what has written over here? Yes. So. It is a uh, very basic and uh, first program whenever we start our uh, sessions with. Um, it is having a syntax as uh, we need to specify the class. Uh, name. Class is the keyword. Before I go to that. And uh, followed by class name. Class name can be any name. And uh, the uh, way uh, our Java program mainly will start with uh, public, static, void, main, string. It is going to take some arguments and uh, to print something system dot out dot print ln as hello world. Uh, so here. The syntax as you can see here. Our Java programming language is a case sensitive language. So I think you know what is case sensitive. If it is a mentioned as case sensitive language, we need to write the words in the same manner, which means in general we say that uh, capital H E L L O or uh, H E L L O both seems to be same in our context, but in case sensitive languages, these two are two different words. These two are two different words. Then how I, how can we give the names for our class? How can we give our names for the class? So class name can be any identifier, any identifier. Every word of that particular class should be capitalized. Every word of that particular uh, class name. Uh, here class name is given as my first Java class. My is one word, first is one word, Java is one word, class is one word, uh, one word. So every first letter of each and every word should be capitalized while you are writing the class names. So do remember this every time. Whenever you are writing a class name, you must and should uh, write the class name as such a way of every word which you include in the class name, the first letter should be capitalized. Uh, coming on to the method name. Method name or uh, variable names. Um, they should be also same as like a class names except for the first word, except for the first word. Uh, so here method name given as my method name. Followed by open close braces. Every method name should be having uh, a syntax as like this. My method name uh, where the first word 
under first letter should be lower case and rest of the things as same as like uh, the class name what we discussed. And second thing, um, every file of a Java should be ex uh, appended with dot Java. Like if if we were if we are recognizing a document as a word document, it is having some extension as a dot devocx. If it is a, a Excel file dot uh, Excel. If it is PDF dot PDF. So likewise, every program file name should be end with uh, an extension of dot Java. So whenever you are saving a program, um, that should be saved with the class name. So my class name is my first Java class. So whenever I have written some piece of code in notepad or uh, some environment, I have to write my file name as my uh, first Java program. This is the class name dot Java as the part of extension to recognize this is a Java program. I need to start and write with. Dot Java as the extension to save with and every pro uh, every Java program must and should contain this public static void main as uh, when program starts executed, uh, the control of execution will start from the main method. The control will start from the main method to execute that particular program. So in class lo, oh sorry, in our class we'll be having a uh, plenty of lines, plenty of uh, code, a piece of code to perform some operations. So here, uh, in order to identify where to start our execution, the Java program will identify this piece of code, public static void main. So wherever you find this uh, main function, the Java program processing starts from the main method, which is a mandatory part of every Java program. So without this, there will be no Java program, right? So coming on to this. This and all not necessary, not needed. Um, let's discuss about uh, variables. So I think do you have an idea about data types or uh, shall I elaborate them? Okay, no problem. Let me give you a glance uh, about it. So what is a data type? We have a plenty of information to present in the system. So we need to have a separation from one type of data to another type of data. So the, uh, there comes the part of data type. Uh, here we have uh, various uh, kinds of uh, data types as uh, integer, float, double, byte, long, Likewise, so integer by uh, integer is of uh, four bytes, byte is of one byte, double is of uh, eight bytes, character is of uh, one byte again, um, which will have uh, a various basic data types. Here we have, yeah, byte. It is having only eight bits to represent the data. It is default size is zero, and uh, how to declare the byte? We have a keyword called a byte. A is equal to, and we are going to represent the value here. So the minimum and maximum range is given over here, which can accepted by a byte or uh, a short. So what are the data types we have as a primitive data types? The Java supported data types, byte, short, integer, long, float double boolean character. So these are various data types. Uh, character, it supports only one single character uh, from small a to uh, small z, capital A to capital Z and uh, numbers also, but they should be represented in a single quotation. Uh, in the single quotation, we need to represent a character. A boolean, 
the name itself it is employing it is stores only one bit of information that one bit is either uh, true or false so its example is boolean uh, variable name is equal to either uh, we can assign true or false for the boolean variable if it is the double it is a precision of a 64 bit uh, and we need to mention uh, d at the end of the uh, number to represent it is a double if it is the float we need to represent with uh, f if it is the long we need to represent uh, capital letter L to say that the given number is a long of data type. If it is integer, we need not to specify. So likewise, every data type da that Java supports over here is having a specified size and a specified range. And as an example, you can see what is its default value. So now let's uh, quickly move on to uh, set up how we are going to uh, set up our environment for uh, installation and uh, executing the programs as i will show you some part of that so here uh, it is a open link to everyone tutorialspoint.com and you can refer to java if you want i can provide you the link also for this um, where to install uh, Java and uh, IDE we'll see here. So here um, you can download uh, the uh, Java file over the link given over here. Go to the. Yeah. When you click on the link, go to the Windows environment and go. If your uh, system is 32 bit, go for X64. If your system is uh, supports with 64 bit operating system, go for the x86 installer and you can download uh, and you can uh, install. Either you can download Java 8 version or uh, Java 11 version. My preference is Java 11. Try to install uh, Java 11 in your uh, systems. So select the Java 11, go to the windows and uh, choose the appropriate uh, file to install here uh, for the Java 11. You have only uh, installer as a x64 installer. So go for. This installation file only 140.24 MB of size. So it is only a simple next next process to installed with. So you can easily set up that. So once you install that. Um, so let me show you how to set up the path also. Uh, now can you see my entire screen? Hello? Yeah, sure. Yes. So once you install by downloading that file, um, you will be having a folder in the uh, C drive uh, as. Uh, you can see a file like this Java. In the in your program files, Java JDK version and uh, some files like uh, bin conf include like that. So you need to copy this uh, path. You need to after installing the Java to execute our uh, programs. You need to copy this path and uh, you need to right click on uh, the. My PC uh, properties. So here you can see advanced system settings. In the advanced system settings. Go to the environment variables in the environment variables under the. Uh, we have uh, two types of variables over here. One is path variables and system variables. You need to specify our Java path over here. If you have a path already, it is uh, there. 
you simply click on edit and uh, give the path over here either as like uh, java underscore home. Um, can you uh, can you notice here? The C program files Java JDK and its version as what I am having in. Uh, my. C. Program files Java this one. Yeah up to here. So we need to specify that in the. Uh, environment over here. Right, so that uh, detailed uh, steps have been given in the. Here itself. Yeah. Um, right click on my computer, go to the properties, select the environment variables. So before that, uh, it has been not mentioned as uh, advanced system settings. You have to go to the advanced system settings once you enter into the properties. Then go to the environment variables, go to the advanced tab, then uh, we need to specify the path variable as like, like this. C program files, Java, the JDK and bin. So this is the path we need to set up for executing our Java programs. Then uh, nowadays we need not to worry about executing Java files in our system. So we have uh, IDEs, NetBeans or uh, Eclipse. Same. Uh, these we call them as uh, Java editors. Uh, we call them as Java editors. So you can uh, go to the link given over here and uh, you can download the latest version of uh, Eclipse. Uh, from the downloading packages. So if you simply click on this, the executable file will get downloaded. Then you can. Uh, you can easily install um with the next next process so once you download that file uh, a installer will be downloaded uh, from the link then you simply double click on it so that you can run and uh, while selecting the installer while selecting the installer either you can choose one of these first two uh, eclipse ide for java developers or uh, eclipse ide for java double uh, E developers enterprise edition. We call them as Java double E. So try to choose uh, Eclipse IDE for Java double E developers. Not the simply Java developers Java double E developers because uh, so that uh, we can also execute some advanced uh, Java programs later on. So that's all it will ask you to uh, specify the workspace. Uh, so default workspace you give as it is and uh, you can continue with the installer and uh, once installation is completed, you can go for launch. So this is the quick steps to install. Uh, the Java file uh, Java JDK file and. Uh, uh, Eclipse, so now uh, let me show you how to. Uh, um, start with our uh, programs. Uh, can you see the Eclipse ID? Um, is it visible, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So initially you will be looking into a welcome screen. We need not to go with the welcome screen, so I'll simply close it. Uh, there are some many projects to be created with, so simply click on file. New. Um, simple uh, go to the other. Uh, simply select as a. Java project. Simple Java project. So click on next. So it is asking me for the uh, project name. So I'm giving uh, project name as my own name. First program. So here you can choose the version uh, which is there in our system. So no uh, need not to worry about all those things. Uh, I'm not creating any module, so I'm simply going to the next. Yeah, finish. That's it. No. So in the. Left side panel, can you see the project has been created first program? 
where uh, it is involved with uh, many libraries to execute our program and uh, you can see src folder where our, where we are going to write our uh, first program so this is just initial setup so let me re-explain that again go to new go to other simply type as a java project so click on the java project and uh, type the project name um, just click on next that's it and finish the project will get created so how to uh, write our program right click on src new class because uh, we have to write uh, our uh, program with the classes so i am clicking on class so now it is asking me to give the name of the class so i am giving my class name as my first program i think as i explained you um, the class name can be contained with multiple words each and every word uh, first letter must and should be capitalized m is capital f is capital and p is capital this is the way how java programmers are going to write uh, the class names method names like that and so on so uh, here the advantage of using ide is which will simplify the structure you need to write so i am directly writing public static void main so i am choosing uh, can you see the checkbox here uh, i am I, I would like to start my program with the main function itself so i'll simply click on finish so with this a program uh, a file with the class name and the file name gets matched have you noticed this or not I discussed with you my first program is the class name actually is the class name the class name and the file name should be matched to execute the program so file name or class name is match a volunteer a class low palate sorry the which the class which contains this public static void main this piece of uh, code which highlighted in blue color the class which contains the public static void main that class name should be saved as a file name so that uh, it can get executed so sorry so as of can you please continue tell you also no problem because everybody in telugu on i mean telugu on telugu right uh, understood yeah. understood yeah. so but uh, if i speak in english then only they can follow to continue with otherwise uh, they yeah, will also yeah, no problem yeah if you are trying to tell in telugu no problem we can continue in between that's not a problem okay mm, okay, yeah. okay 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 thank you sorry sorry for the interruption uh, no problem no problem not at all a big deal not at all a big deal so so let me write a simple uh, hello world uh, to display with so system dot out dot Intelim, semicolon. So simply uh, file and uh, save. That's it. And uh, right click on the Java file, run as Java application. So could you notice uh, the output? of this program what i had given under what we have got as the hello world right so now um, let me quickly explain uh, some objects which i am going to create for this so here i am typing some instance variables 
public integer some variable a integer some variable b of integer type now i am trying to create an object of this my first program so how object has to be created with my first program so this is the class name for which i would like to create an object so i am writing the same class name and i need to create a reference variable for that so this is the reference variable for that so uh, if you notice by words these two are same my first program my first program but if you closely observe the first word here it is capitalized which represents the class name here it is not capitalized which means it is a variable or a method if it is having a open close brace over here we can call it as a method if it is not there if we can call it as a uh, variable or reference variable both are same uh, so in order to create an object we need to type the new keyword followed by the same class name for which we would like to create an object my first program put the semicolon so now i have created an object for this particular class for this particular class i have created an object now i need to set the properties of the class so class kuna properties enti okati a ane oka property b ane di inkoka property ఆ ప్రాపర్టీస్ ని నేను ఇక్కడ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ని యూస్ చేసే యాక్సెస్ చేస్తాను సో హౌ లెట్ మీ టేక్ ద ఆబ్జెక్ట్ మై ఫస్ట్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ డాట్ సో వెన్ ద మూమెంట్ వెన్ ఐ ఎంటర్ ద డాట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ గివింగ్ మీ సమ్ హింట్స్ వాట్ ఆర్ ఆల్ ద థింగ్స్ ఇట్ క్యాన్ యాక్సెస్ విత్ సో మై ఫస్ట్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ it is having a access to the a equal to 10 some assigning some value again let me take my uh, program dot b so dot is the uh, representation where we access the variables of a class i am assigning some value to this so how can i print them so if you simply type sys automatically this will generate uh, the piece of code so access them with uh, a is equal to plus this is the wave we are going to uh, format the output in the system.out.println if the, if we want our text to be printed we'll specify them in a double quotes and if we are referring the value to get printed with we are going to separate that by using plus operator and uh, i first program dot a since i have already set the value so let me try to print it run as sorry not run on server run as java application so if you notice um, i have not uh, assigned the value for a over here a is taking 10 so in the similar fashion i'll write for b also control c control v i am writing for b and uh, i am writing for b here so if i try to execute if i try to execute a value will get printed as 10 b value will get printed as 20 so likewise i can create a n number of objects for one particular class 
So I'm creating one more object. My first program one. So as I discussed with you while discussing the classes and objects, a class can have a n number of objects. So if I say a class is a person. Ashok is one object. Subarami is one object like that. Um, many objects can be there for a particular class and the behavior values what we are going to set for that particular class is different for different different objects. So let us try to find the differences over here. Uh, if I try to access a B variables with uh, the first object as my first program, the values will be 10 and 20. So let me try to do the same with uh, my first program one. Dot a is equal to let me assign the value 30. Uh, my first program one dot b. Let me assign the value as 40. So when I try to print them. A value. Um, plus let me take it as my first program one dot a. Plus. My first program dot B. So what output you are expecting here? A is equal to 10. So let me separate that. With some space so that uh, we can find the difference. So a value is equal to so in place of this my first program dot a we have assigned value to 10 here my first program one dot a what is the value we have assigned here it has 30. So let's notice the difference. What hurts? What hurts? Yeah. Plus I have to mention here. So whenever you are printing with the specific format, we need to separate that by using the plus operator. It is a concatenation operator. So is it clear that 10 and 20 uh, we are uh, setting with the first object, my first uh, program object, and we are setting the new values with the different object as what my first program one so like that a class can have a n number of objects each object will have the different different values of the properties exhibited by a program uh, of a class so so far is this clear are we good so far yeah sure yeah. super or uh, if you have any doubts, you can let me know. So now, now. Um, let's not go into all this stuff. Let me erase. Every time uh, if I want to create some object like this, a, a number of objects, uh, I need to write a repeated uh, number of similar lines, right? So. It is not possible all the time, so what we have here is. Um, loops. So whenever we have a particular statement has to be repeated for uh, again and again over a time. We have loops over here to perform that. So what is a loop? We have various types of loops while loop uh, for loop while loop do while loop according to their scenarios. We are going to use one of them. Um, their syntaxes uh, are like this. Um, we have various types of syntaxes over here also uh, for loop. Let's start with some basic for loop. 
then we can have an idea. Uh, for example, I would like to print uh, a variable for uh, 10 times. I want to print from 1 to 10. So 1 to 10 and print shall go down JPC system dot out dot print line knee 10 times in and rile no 10 times rast the number of lines equi uh, difficulty of, uh, of understanding good or just on so we go for for loop. So for loop is having a syntax like a uh, integer I where it has to start with initialization and where it has to end I less than 10. Uh, and I plus plus. So next uh, level coaches are key. I value and the increment of value. So that uh, where it has to get stopped with. So that we are going to place in a particular loop. So if you closely observe here. If our loop is having. Uh, uh, three things. One is initialization. One is initialization. Second is uh, condition to check the Atul, loop to. Sorry, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, see, you are mentioning in the for loop, right? Int i. Yeah. So instead of that, like uh, mentioning the type of the i variable, just we can mention public int i semicolon. Then we can use i equal to zero, i less than ten, right? Mm -hmm. Are able to. Public, Next, right? Yeah, public in type. Then no need to mention the data type of the variable, right? In the loop itself. Yeah. Yes. Okay, done. Yeah. It is also possible. Yeah. Thank you. Because see, I I have seen lots of programming languages, right? In the mm. loop, we haven't mentioned this kind of uh, data type of the variable. So that's what I thought. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, thank you. It is. It is belongs to the local of a for loop. So whenever, mm. uh, as as your uh, doubt, I can clarify it as like this. So whenever if you are declaring the variable I over here, this can be accessible over this brace open close brace. So if I declare this variable I as integer here itself, the variable I will be initialized and terminated within in this open close brace. Uh, block. So that is only the reason we can uh, use the variables as per our requirement. So it is not a big deal where you are going to use or uh, declare. Sorry, sorry once like if you declare in the for loop, uh, it will be useful for up to that loop only, right? I mean uh, up to that condition only. Simple, uh, very simple. Uh, open 15 to 16, uh, 15, 16, 17 line loan a coca block on the Ikada integer I and Oka Danin and declare chest there from mm -hmm. oh, 15th line open brace where I have declared integer I that will be available until uh, the close brace has been reached. We call this as the uh, scope. Okay. The name of the name of the name of the scope and term and take the visibility of the work on the end. So then you could have a lot declared said I'm only a moth on the for loop key math from a I teaser I and other availability loan to the middle not short on the okay. Okay. If my name of abo declare just the adi can the go loop and then call up on what coach. I'll look look good over exactly. I'll look look good over coach memory saving goes on our turn on. Oh, yes. Memory yes, saving for some more references. Uh, mm. uh, easy go under them cause some money in the line of orders. Yeah, yes, understood. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. So. I am declaring the value value of I where it has to start with. So zero and under start a while and up to none. So where it has to get terminated. I less than 10. So here there is a simple. Uh, logic difference uh, you need to notice here. So I less than 10, which means um, whether 9 less than 10, uh, the, whether this statement is true or false, obviously false. So ante is the 9 digger ko ochi 10 tarvata agi potundi, which means 10 less than 10. So likewise, I value will start from 1, 
two, three, and so on. Um, up to uh, nine and ten. Sorry, nine less than ten. The condition is uh, true, but ten less than ten condition is false. So it will not execute i value as ten. And uh, the incrementation operation what we had given for the variable i is i plus plus. So whenever you do remember i plus plus is always uh, equal to the statement as i is equal to i plus one. So the value will get incremented by one at each and every time. So what is the output of this program? So as I said, the value of I started at zero. And it is uh, incremented by one each and every time. So what we are doing in the for loop value I. Uh, we are just pr printing the value 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on 9. Since where we have given our uh, termination condition I less than 10, which means uh, less than 10 means uh, lesser than one value. Suppose if I given here it as uh, is equal to less than or equal to. So it will print the values up to 10. So we need to notice the difference we, uh, what initialization condition we had given, what termination condition we have mentioned. So but is it is not same in the while loop. While we are giving some. Uh, the difference between for loop and while loop is only one. Uh, for for loop, we are going to have a fixed number of uh, statements. We have starting and we have ending, but in while loop we don't have such. Until the condition gets terminated, we keep on executing the statements. the same program which I have written here it as. So if you observe I value I have initialized to zero. I will continue this loop until I reach the I will terminate the condition. So I have written the statement. I need to write explicitly within the while loop as a, this uh, incrementation operation where I should exactly specify to terminate. So I less than 10 and a condition in a while loop lo simple guy la print just on. Similarly, you can check with the do while loop here. Um, Ashok, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. So in this case, you are declaring int i equal to zero, right? But in this case, is, this variable is acting as a local variable now. Um, yeah, let me give you a clarity on that. For loop, is having three things as I said. Initialization. Then. Uh, termination. Semicolon followed. I'm, wrong. I'm asking about this kind of variable like you declare int i equal to zero, right? Mm -hmm. uh, like in previously you declared for for loop int i means that is only for that part particular loop only, but if you it's declare this kind of int i equal to int i means mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. is going to be act for other than this while loop also, right? Yes, other than the, uh, this while loop, it is accessible. OK, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm asking. Thank you. OK, yeah. that's it, right? Thank you. So for loop lo intente, initialization untundi, termination untundi, uh, increment or decrement an operation untundi. Kani while loop kala undazu. While loop will have only the condition. 
so this termination i can also call it as uh, condition termination condition the while loop will have only the uh, termination condition so that is the reason why we are not going to declare the value of i within the for loop so we must and should declare the variable i outside of the uh, while loop only right so you can practice all those uh, examples by uh, going through with the uh, things over here so when we don't have a particular uh, uh, numbers to be taken with if we have an array of numbers uh, i can take the list of numbers with the for loop uh, with only one single variable over here so this is a new format of uh, representing a for loop so ela ante ikkada already manaku integer numbers ane oka list of numbers unnai avi enn unnayo manaku teliyadu we can't identify its size so in such case the for loop can be taken as to iterate over all those numbers for integer uh, the same data type of uh, that particular array to iterate over an array so integer type uh, we are taking a new variable x over the numbers over the numbers what we have so we simply uh, print the variable x we can see the output as a uh, 10 20 30 40 and 50 similarly if it is a string of array of uh, names uh, james larry tom lacy like that i'll simply take the string as a variable name i am iterating that over the names over the names and i am trying to print simply as name name so that i can simply print the james larry tom lacy like this so hope you understood the today's class so i think so, uh, sir, i have one to... thing sorry yeah. one thing sir so if you are trying to declare int uh, bracket numbers means if it is see those va those values like 10 20 30 40 are in curly braces right yes yes so i mean to say this is not a list right it is a list of numbers only but uh, see, sorry because i know python that's why i'm confusing in okay. python if it is a list then we can have append as a square brackets if okay. it is a couple kind of thing then we can make it as a curly brace curly braces mm -hmm. so the difference is there between curly braces and uh, Uh, normal brace normal brackets so is there any such kind of uh, no 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 please please uh, don't confuse with uh, python and uh, java over here okay so let me give you the clarity on this then so initially as while i was discussing with for loop integer i i have declared it as right suppose if i want to store a list of numbers in one single variable i must and should make it as an array so that i can store some list of elements into the variable i so here i am storing some values 10 20 30 40 50 uh, into the numbers so i have to represent it in a array format array format ent ante uh, square brace followed by the uh, variable so prasthaniki deni comments lo pettadamu yeah so if i try to uh, execute integer x anedi oka new variable teesukuntunanu deni kosam numbers lo unna oka oka value ni print cheyadam kosam so um this is a new way of representing the for loop when i have when i don't have the size when i don't have the size suppose i can add one more element as a 60 over here later the list may contain some more than uh, uh, the specified numbers how uh, how many numbers so in such case i can uh, uh, 
uh, go this with this uh, new way of uh, writing the program. So if you observe the output is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Even this format is also not necessary. Control D I'm deleting print LN so that uh, every uh, there is a difference. Print print LN key difference and enter. Print it will continue to print in same line. If I take the print LN, it will try to print in the next line. Run as Java application. So all the 60 elements printed one after the other. That is all the format we uh, are going to follow over here. So hope you understood the today's class. So let me open the class for uh, doubts. If you have any doubts so far the uh, discussed content, you can uh, ask me. If you have any kind of doubts, you can let me know. Already um, the link has been given. Good. So any doubts guys, uh, feel free to ask. Asok, one thing. Mm -hmm. So while I'm set up in while I'm set up uh, Java 8 in my system, I mm -hmm. haven't given this kind of path variable and all, but it's working fine. What is the difference between if I don't provide the path variable and uh, kind of thing? So I'm not understanding uh, that that point actually. Have you understood my question? Yeah, you have installed Java, but you haven't uh, set up the path, yes, right? Path variable, path variable. Yes, correct. So by default, it might have taken nowadays with the higher versions. OK, OK, that's what I'm confusing because I haven't given any path variable, but it's working fine. But sometimes, sometimes you need to notice that suppose if you have installed a lower version of Java. And you also have installed a higher version of Java. Mm -hmm. Which means uh, two installations of Java files will be there. Yes. So now if you want to have a higher uh, version features. Mm -hmm. If your system by default has taken the lower version features. Mm -hmm. So in such case you can't execute with the higher version features. OK, but uh, so at, that time, at that time we need to set up the uh, path over there. But there is a chance to like while creating the project, right? And mm. the time there is a chance to select the version of Java which which we want to run the project, right? And the time we can able to select the version, right? Yes, it is also possible, but uh, okay. that is the possibility only when you are using the IDE. Mm -hmm. OK, Understood. if you are using command prompt uh, to execute the programs, you need to set up that manually. If you are using uh, uh, here you can go to the build path. Go to configure build path. Uh, here you need to choose uh, the particular Java uh, version which you are using. Yeah, OK and uh, yeah. This is for only that particular project. If you are yeah. creating one particular it's project and particular project only will going to run on particular like uh, version. Yeah, kind of thing. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So okay. here it is uh, only one project is there. If I have multiple projects for each and every project, you can set up uh, a new version. OK, understood. Great. Thank you. Fine. So any others? I think Shiva is asking some. Thing. Shiva, please go ahead. No, nothing. Uh, like uh, it is recording video, right? Where yes, can, we can access this record video. I mean, uh, can we access? Uh, Hitesh uh, will help you to find. Uh, uh, definitely, definitely. Hitesh will give you a way to access the recorded video. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so one big announcement kind of thing. Yeah, so, please go ahead. Yeah, based on this 
class uh, so the instructor will going to give you some kind of you know uh, examples like for loop and uh, this kind of class creation and everything you guys can follow and uh, try to you know uh, complete the uh, whatever the examples that given by the trainer or hs something so before coming to the class only so maybe in the, uh, in between like randomly uh, that instructor will going to ask something you no know, tomorrow class he is going to ask you like uh, what are the programs you did uh, yesterday kind of thing so you should have to show the uh, i know all yeah, the as part of that i think i had given you a small workout also what okay. is that uh, installing the java file installing the ide and work out the program what i had uh, given uh, what i have what program what i have done now you can practice the same program and uh, with the for loop and while loop also yeah great thank you thank you did did you explain this uh, do while loop also ashok i mean uh, no 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 do while Maybe. loop i have not explained i have uh, explained okay. for loop and while loop yeah but uh, do while loop is also similar type of uh, while loop if you want me to explain i can explain but um, we are over willing with the time so i stopped yeah. it No, no. You can explain if you need it. You can explain it in the session. Yeah, in the next class, I'll uh, explain it definitely. Actually, it may not be possible to explain all the things. So uh, we have provided the link in chart. Uh, it seems we have provided the link in chart, so you can access the uh, items in that in that tutorials point, right? Basics of today. Today the class is about basics of Java, right? So you can cover all the basics of Java, like. Uh, of while loop and for loop and all these type of things you know is it okay yeah hitesh because you can uh, we, we can jump into further in the next sessions so here um, the prerequisite to learn java is uh, at least to see programming language so that we can easily understand with the java programming language so major prerequisite is c++ c and c++ but it's fine even if you don't have a knowledge on c++ but at least the prerequisite to, to learn java is a c programming language until or unless I, again we need to start from the scratch it's very difficult uh, because uh, java itself uh, containing a plenty of syllabus so that's why i'm moving a bit forward uh, to cover those uh, loops and all even the variables data types and all yeah okay yes, so it, it's better to mention some um, what are the things they have to uh, clear for tomorrow in tutorials point so that they, they can they can come with the updated ones it means we can we can we can tell them like you have to cover all the things like uh, operators loop loop control decision making and and yeah. data types like that if if we tell if we sort out that they will come with the updated one and we'll go with uh, some strings and arrays for tomorrow like that no problem it's not like uh, as the initial day sessions uh, let them listen to the class then whatever the things they find as a new let them practice on their own if they have any doubts they will come up tomorrow and uh, we can clarify uh, doubts in uh, 5 to 10 minutes then we can start our session right yeah and also it's better to mention them what we are going to discuss tomorrow yeah definitely definitely tomorrow i'll start with the Uh, object-oriented features um, like inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction. As I already explained, one simple small program. So that's enough for base to start with the new uh, object-oriented concepts. So as I told, uh, might be tomorrow I'll be covering uh, the constructor. Then. Uh, the some of the object oriented features over here 
might be polymorphism, might be encapsulation, might be packages. So I'm going to start with the object oriented features in the next class. Yeah, right, participants. If you have any doubts, uh, you can interact with the uh, trainer and clear your doubts. Otherwise, you can take an end the session for today. Yeah. Yeah, okay. No, 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 no,